Hey, I'm Max and welcome to this Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorial. By the end of this tutorial right here, you should have a simple game like this where you can jump on cubes, you can reach the checkpoint to have a cool particle effect. You have a cube that moves around and you can jump on it and move with it. You have over here a fake cube that you can just walk right through it and a cube that goes invisible and visible every couple of seconds. You can also die if you hit the spikes and when you hit retry, you go back to your last checkpoint. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe. Okay, so for this part of the tutorial, you can see that we have a bunch of features and we can make some pretty good platformer game with this if we just update some mechanics. But you can see that the game is way too hard because when we die, we start from scratch all the time. We need to have some form of checkpoint that save when we close and reopen the game. So let's do that. First, I'll open my third person character blueprint add a new variable and call it checkpoint. Then I will set it to instance editable to see it in the editor, you don't have to, and then change the variable type to a vector. Because a position is always X, Y, and Z, so it's a vector with three values. Then I'm going to create a new blueprint in my blueprints folder. I will create a actor, call it BP underscore checkpoint. I will drag it to the other side then add a static mesh again. For this one, I don't actually have any static mesh ready, but I found in the starter content, this pillar frame, which I guess looks pretty good. It kind of looks like a flag or something, I guess. And I need to set the collision to no collision because I don't want to collide with the pole. Finally, I need to add something to detect the collision if it's not going to be the pole. So I will add a box collision and by default this box collision is set to overlap all not block all so that means that when you go over it it will trigger the event but it will not prevent you from moving then I will just make this a little bit bigger let's say 128 128 128 and I will move the box up a little bit to be at the height of the pole so like I said since it's set to overlap all it will not block it but it will trigger an event if we go down to the event, we can see the second one is on component begin overlap and we have end overlap as well. In our case, we will use the begin overlap. So click on that. So you can see when we begin overlap with the box, we need to do just like we did with the spike. So drag from the other actor, cast to third person character. So if the thing that overlapped with the box is a third person character, we want to set the checkpoint to the position of the pole or the actor actually because you can see here this is the scene root which is the bottom of the pole so we can just do right click get actor location and we can simply put that in here now what I need to do is simply put my checkpoint let's say right here on this surface then save and you can see if I take a look at my character the checkpoint is 0, 0, 0. And now if I go on this pole right here, it is set to 380, 420, 370. But now you can see if I make my character die and then I restart the game. If I look at my third person character again, you can see my checkpoint is gone. Because when the level restarts, every variable is reset. Everything is reset. So what we need to do is create a save game so we can save the data to a file and then load it back. So let's do this. Go in your blueprint folder, right click, choose blueprint crash, and you can see here there is nothing for saving. We need to go at the bottom and click the little arrow next to all classes so we can see all of the classes and search for save game, the first one right here. Then I will call it bp underscore save game. You can open it up and you can see that there is actually nothing in here and you don't really want to use the event graph at least not for this project because it's very simple you just want to create variables and those are the variables that will be saved in the file so i want to create a variable call it checkpoint then i'm going to set it to a vector and just like that we have our save file ready to save a checkpoint now go back to your third person character right click and search for end play which is the event, as it suggests, uh, that happens when you close the game or when the game closes for whatever reason. All you want to do is on end play, we want to create save game object. 
then we can simply select our class right here BP save game then in this save game object we want to set the checkpoint like this and we want to set it to our players checkpoint So just like that we set the checkpoint in the save file and then we simply have to drag from the save file again save game to slot and we simply have to put it a name so we can call it for example save file or whatever we want user index we can just leave that to zero and just like that we can save our data to a file obviously on begin play we also need to load it back for this we do load game from slot we put in the same name so save file the same user index and then from that we should be able to get the checkpoint but we can't because this is just a general save game object reference we need to first cast it to our bp save game and then we can get from that our checkpoint finally we can set the checkpoint of our player so maybe it's a little bit confusing maybe i should have called it checkpoint save or something so this is the checkpoint of our player we put it in the save file this is in the save file and we put it back in our player the only thing really missing about this is that our player by default is not at 0, 0, 0. So if we load and we don't have a checkpoint, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, and it's going to teleport us under the map. So before teleporting the player to the checkpoint, we need to make sure that the checkpoint is not 0. So we just have to drag from it, get the length, and then if the length is greater than 0, then from that we will add a branch connected to the set checkpoint. And if it's greater than zero, then we want to set actor location, which is going to be a teleport to the new location, which will be the checkpoint. So let's recap real quick. When the player stops playing, so either because we close the game or we reopen the level or we open the new level, it's going to create a save game before deleting the player and saving the checkpoint from the player into this slot. And then when we reopen the game, we're going to load this slot, cast it to a BP save game. Then we're going to get the checkpoint in that save file, set it in our player. And if it's greater than zero, so if it's not just zero, 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 then we are going to teleport our player to it. So if we do that and test it out, let's see if it works. So if I go on my checkpoint, okay, so I set my checkpoint. Now if I close the game and reopen it, I'm back at my checkpoint. And same thing if I die and then I hit retry, I should be back at my checkpoint and there you go, I'm here. And if you're wondering where the save file is saved, if you go in your projects, you open up your project, go into saved and then save games, it's right here. So you can see if I delete it and I play the game again, my checkpoint is gone. The only thing you have to be careful with the way we set this up is that if you add a second level, when you go to the second level, you don't want to load the checkpoint from the previous level. So if you ever add a different level, you need to make sure that when you go to the next level, you set the checkpoint back to 0, 0, 0. And in the save game, you need to save also the level you're at to open the right level when you reopen the game. But it's pretty much the same thing as what we did, so I'm not going to bother doing this. The last thing I want to show you is how to make some basics effects. So go in whatever folder you want. You can also create a new folder, effects. Right click, go to effects, Niagara emitter new emitter from template next empty finish then call it whatever you want so ne underscore uh, effect i'm not really sure what to call it open it up and over here you have pretty much the particle editor where you can make any sort of particle you want so in the emitter update i will add a burst spawn burst instantaneous and you can also add a spawn rate if you want them to spawn over time i'm going to set the spawn count to 30 so it's going to spawn 30 particles every time the particle system loops. Next, I'm going to go in the initialize particles, set the lifetime mode to random between five and eight seconds, set the sprite size mode uh, random uniform from 15 to 25. Then in particle spawn, I'm going to add a velocity like this. Click the first fixed issue which is going to add apply initial forces then from the velocity you can put in a static velocity like this but you can see it still doesn't move that's because of the other fixed issue that disappeared for some reason but you just have to go in your particle update and add 
solve forces and velocities and now you can see my my particles are moving but they are all moving at exactly the same speed so it looks like one so to make it a little bit more random you can click the little chain link next to the velocity type random and select random range vector and then you can put a minimum and a maximum so let's say minus 100 minus 100 and then 200 200 200 so it's going to be anywhere between minus 100 and 200 for x and y and z is zero because i don't want it to go down so like this it looks a lot better like an explosion then we can add in the particle update color like this and again the chain link and then we can type curve color from curve so we can add a different color over time at the top it's the color so if i select for example the first one double click on it select red and you can see they go from red to white if you don't want it you can click on the white click delete and now they're just red and at the bottom it's the opacity so it goes from one to zero so it fades out also, if you open up the color, you can go in the vibrance and put it higher than one. If you click on it and input the value, let's say 10. And you can see it makes them sort of glow. If I go to 100, it's very obvious, it glows. So I think that looks pretty good. I'll keep that. And also you can see that the particles stay the same size the whole time. So if I go in particle update, I can do scale, sprite, size. And again, add a curve vector 2d from a curve and make it go down it's already like this perfect so it goes so each particle grows a little bit smaller over time until it disappears so that's good you can mess with the settings there are a bunch of things i cannot cover everything but this is like the very basics velocity color and size so let's save this and now we need to create a niagara particle system using this niagara emitter so right click create niagara system then you can rename it if you want so rename niagara system underscore effect let's say open it up and now you can see your emitter is right here and you can change some settings and you can add another emitter so let's say i add again the same one uh ne effect so i added a double and on this one i can change for example the color from red to purple and i can change the velocity max from 200 to 400 so you can see now they both combine to create a cool effect. So now if I save this, let's say I want this to appear when I reach the checkpoint. Well, to do this, it's pretty easy. Just go in your blueprint, create a new blueprint, actor, pp underscore effect. Now you can open it, add a new component, add the Niagara particle system. Then here in the Niagara, you just have to select your effect. And you can see it's already playing. And finally, you don't want the effect to keep playing over and over again. So you can go in the class default, go down at the bottom and you can see lifespan. So after this time, it will be automatically deleted and we can set it to something like eight. So after eight seconds, the actor will automatically be deleted. So now all we have to do is spawn it in the checkpoint and it will be deleted after eight seconds. So here on begin overlap. We set the checkpoint and after that we just have to drag, do spawn actor from class. We can select our BP effect. And if we try to compile that, we get an error because we didn't set the transform. So you can right click on this, click on split struct bin, and now you get scale, rotation, and location. In our case, we don't need the rotation and scale, just the location. And we can just set it to the actor location. And just like that, if we save this, when we go on our checkpoint, it should create this effect. And wow, that's very beautiful. And you can see if I go back on it, it does it again. And you can see it also does it twice. Thing here, you can see NP effect two, and after eight seconds, it should be deleted automatically. So apparently eight seconds is too much because it has time to play twice. So let's reduce the time to four seconds that should be pretty good let's try it out you can see it spawn and it should be deleted after four seconds and yep that's good but now the thing is my checkpoint is already here but if i go back it does it again so to prevent that you can check if the checkpoint is already at that value before doing all of this so here i can drag this to the right 
get actor location. Then I can drag from the actor location to equals equals to get the equal uh, operator with a tolerance of let's say 10 to make sure it's not uh, less than 10 away from the current checkpoint. Then I can drag from the third person character, get the checkpoint and compare it. So I check if the difference between the current player checkpoint and this checkpoint is less than 10. So if it's the same checkpoint, then I'm not going to do the set checkpoint and set the particles. So I'm going to create a branch right here. Move this to the right a little bit. And that's one of the problems with blueprints that gets pretty messy. And then I'm going to drag this here. But again, be careful. I'm checking if they're the same one true, then do the effect and set the checkpoint. It's the opposite. I wanted to do it on false. So if it's not the same one, then set the checkpoint and do the effect. So now if I go back on it, it shouldn't do any effects. And there you go. It doesn't anymore. But if I delete my save file and then I go back, it should do the effect. And there you go. Now if I go off and I go back on, it doesn't do it anymore. So hopefully this whole tutorial helped you understand the basics of Unreal Engine, how the editor works and how some simple blueprints can be used to add some behaviors to your game. Let me know if there's any other tutorial you want to see. Subscribe if you enjoy some game dev content and hopefully I'll see you again later.